So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. In today's session guys, we are going to talk about the PIB news from 25th to 27th of November 2022. And I hope guys your preparations are going well and all the very best for the upcoming RBI grade B examination. And please don't wait for the notification. The notification will definitely come. Use hi hoga, right? So let's begin with the very first question. And yes, before that, if you want to have the PDF of this session, you can join the Telegram channel. The link is provided in the description. So let's talk about the very first question, which is about Gulf Cooperation Council and India. So India and Gulf Cooperation Council have recently announced their intent to pursue negotiations on India GCC free trade agreement. So one more free trade agreement, one more FTA is going to come up in future and the negotiations have been started, right? We have signed a lot of FTAs recently in the recent times. And RBI may last time the question be a statement thi that there are 13 FTAs till now, right? So you have to identify incorrect statement about GCC. All right. So let's talk about this and then we will come back to the question. So abhi ke liye itni hi news hai that uh, these two uh, India and Gulf Cooperation Council, they both have announced their intent to pursue negotiations on a free trade agreement. Now this will be a most modern, a most comprehensive trade agreement with substantial coverage of goods and services if agreed. All right. Now talking about GCC. So remember it is a political and economic alliance. Now remember both alliance, political and economic. So it is a political and economic alliance of six Middle Eastern countries, which are Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, UAE, Qatar, Bahrain, uh, Bahrain and Oman, right? It was established in 1981. And its headquarters are in Riyadh, which is of course in Saudi Arabia, right? Now, if I talk about India and GCC relations, so that is also important. What is the uh, current relationship? How uh, is the current relationship between India and GCC? So remember in the previous financial year, that is financial year 21, 22, GCC was the largest trading partner block, right? India's largest trading partner block with bilateral trade valued at $154 billion in financial year 21-22, right? And out of this $154 billion, exports were valued at $44 billion, while imports were valued at $110 billion, right? If I talk, this is about the goods, right? If I talk about the services, so the bilateral trade was amounted to $14 billion in financial year 22, with exports worth $5.5 billion and imports worth approximately $8.5 billion, right? Now talking more about India GCC relationship. So energy trade, if we talk about energy so GCC countries contribute almost 35% of India's oil imports and 70% of gas imports. So we have to say gas imports are in the world, 35% GCC and 70% uh, sorry, oil imports 35% GCC and gas imports 70%. Right. And India's overall crude oil imports from GCC in 21-22 was about $48 billion, while LNG and LPG imports were about $21 billion. Right. And currently, if I talk about the investments from GCC countries, so from these countries in India, currently the investments are valued at $18 billion. All right. So I think India or GCC ke beach ka jo relation hai, wo kafi better hai, or in terms of trade, if I talk, right. So now let's come back to the question. You have to identify incorrect statements. So it is a political and economic alliance of six Middle Eastern countries. This is correct. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, UAE, Yemen, Bahrain and Oman. Yemen is not there. Qatar is there. Right. So this is incorrect. It was established in 1981 with its headquarters in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. This is correct. It is currently India's second largest trading partner block. Not second largest. It is the largest trading partner block. And GCC countries contribute almost 35% of India's oil imports and 70% of gas imports. So, yeah, we have to study this. Two and four guys will be the correct answer because we have to identify the incorrect statement option C. All right, moving ahead. And there are only five questions today, and all the five questions are important. This was a question which I just asked. So, recently, next question is recently India had one. International Electrotechnical Commission Vice Presidency and Strategic Management Board Chair for this term 23 to 25. You have to identify incorrect statement about this commission, right? So it is in news because India has won the Vice Presidency of International Electrotechnical Commission 
and strategic management board chair for two years term starting from 2023 to 2025 right it will be three years term vimal mahendru right and who will be the vice president vimal mahendru will be the iec vice president representing india do you remember this name very very important all right and it, during the voting india secured over 90% of the votes casted by the full members of iec during its general meeting which took place in san francisco right now talking about this commission so remember it was established more than 100 years ago in the year 1906 with an objective of standard setting basically it is an international standard setting body that publishes international standards for all electrical electronic and related technologies which collectively known as electro technology all right jitne bhi electrical electronic ya fir related technologies hai unke liye international standards ko set karne ka zimmedari is commission ke paas hai it is headquartered in geneva in switzerland and currently there are 89 member countries in it including our pyara bharat and standardization management board is the apex governance body of this commission all right so itna hi padhna hai isse zyada padhne ki zarurat nahi hai so need we need to identify the incorrect statement it is an international standard setting body that publishes international standards yes correct it was established in 1906 it is headquartered in geneva switzerland it has 180 members country no they, currently there are 89 member countries not 180 which means option d will be the correct answer because again we have to identify the incorrect statement all right Moving ahead to question number three, CEO round table on sustainable tourism was held in New Delhi recently. It was aimed at enhancing awareness of industry stakeholders on national and global priorities for sustainable tourism, and to share and promote the best practices on sustainable tourism. It was organized, of course, by Ministry of Tourism, which is headed by Mr. G. Kishan Reddy, in collaboration, in partnership with which of the following organizations, right? so it was a ceo round table on sustainable tourism it took place in new delhi recently and as the name suggest it was held it was took it was you know it took place to enhance awareness to increase awareness to spread awareness among the industry stakeholders on how we can move ahead uh, with the how we can move ahead towards the sustainable tourism and to share and promote best practices in this area all right now it was organized by ministry of tourism in partnership with united nation environment program and responsible tourism society of india right and it was held under the national strategy of sustainable tourism which was held recently in this year only 2022 with the objective of mainstreaming sustainability in indian tourism sector that is the main objective other than this to ensure a more resilient inclusive carbon neutral and resource efficient tourism by safeguarding natural and cultural resources all right it was launched this year 2022 during national summit on developing sustainable and responsible tourist destination which was organized by ministry of tourism in partnership with unep and rtsi which is responsible tourist society of india all right now coming back to the question so it was organized by ministry of tourism in collaboration with unep and RTSI, which means option D, guys, will be the correct answer. A and B. Moving ahead to question number four. Annual month-long Nayi Chetna Pehel Badlav Ki, which is a community-led national campaign against gender-based discrimination, was launched recently. Which ministry has launched this campaign? Very easy question, although, but yeah, let's talk about it. It was Ministry of Rural Development which has launched it, headed by Giriraj Singh, currently. This ministry has launched Nayi Chetna Pehel Badlav Ki, which is a community-led national campaign against gender-based discrimination. Right? This is a campaign against what? Gender-based discrimination, which is prohibited by our constitution. Right? It was launched on the occasion of International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, which was observed on 25th of November. And of course, the objective was to build capacities of women and the marginalized to identify and, and acknowledge. the different forms of violence that they experience right wo dekho kai baar to badi durbhagya ki baat hoti hai ye ki hame kai baar to pata hi nahi hota that we are undergoing a violence right so at least at least the jo jinke jo sufferer hai usko pata to chalna chahiye ki uske sath violence ho raha hai right so for that this campaign has been launched the theme is elimination of gender based violence and as part of it 
160 gender resources center called nari chetna kendras were inaugurated in 13 states right nari chetna kendras were inaugurated how many 160 right and they will work with one stop centers of ministry of women and child development there is a scheme of ministry of women and child development one stop center scheme where uh, every type of assistance be it legal assistance medical assistance or financial assistance right psycho social support every kind of assistance is provided to the women who are affected by violence in public or in domestic uh, spaces all right so that is the one stop center scheme now talking more about this campaign so it will be a one month long program uh, and it will take place from 25th of November to 23rd December. The theme I have discussed is gender based violence and it is important it was organized. It is being organized in fact under Deen Dayal uh, Yojana National Rural Livelihood Mission NRLM right and it will be implemented by all states in collaboration with the uh, civil society organization or the NGOs. All right. Now coming back to the question. So it was organized by Ministry of Rural Development option C. And moving ahead to the last question, but not the least, which initiatives of Ministry of Panchayati Raj again headed by Giriraj Singh under E Panchayat Mission Mode project have won the gold award in the national awards for E governance. That's very, very important. So two initiatives under E Panchayat Mission Mode project. There is a umbrella project of Ministry of Panchayati Raj, which is known as E Panchayat Mission Mode project, right? And under this mission mode project, under this umbrella project, there are two projects which are e Gram Swaraj and Audit Online. These two projects have been awarded with the gold award during the national awards for e-governance. And they were awarded under the category Excellence in Government Process Re-Engineering for Digital Transformation. Right. Now this mission mode project was launched to transform the uh, functioning of Panchayati Raj and to ensure more transparency to ensure accountability and and to make the panchayati raj system more effective right now talking about these two initiatives number one let's talk about e gram swaraj so e gram swaraj is nothing but an initiative to bring in better transparency in the decentralized planning that is the panchayati raj system it was launched two years back 2020 it is basically it provides a single window for capturing panchayat information with the complete profile of the panchayat, details of their finances, asset details, activities taken up through the panchayat plans, right? So everything in a transparent manner is provided on this portal e Gram Swaraj. And it is a user friendly web based portal to strengthen e governance in panchayati raj institutions across the country. Now talking about audit online. So as the name says, it is a software. It is an, it is an open source application basically which is open for all, which is used for uh, auditing of the panchayats, right? It is used for auditing of the panchayats and it, it has been also awarded with the gold award during the national awards of e-governance. All right. So coming back to the question, the initiatives are e Gram Swaraj and audit online. So the correct answer will be option D, A and B. All right. So that's it for today's session, guys. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next session on Friday. Goodbye, take care and God bless.